Herr Lodebri. The eruption that began on the Reykjanes Peninsula on January 14th is over and lasted for just 41 hours. Despite being the smallest eruption we've had so far, it was the most destructive, swallowing three houses, cutting off the main road, and destroying the main water pipe and electrical line. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be over, as uplift in Svartsengi is still ongoing at the same pace, meaning there's still magma flowing into the magma chamber. So, eruptions in the near future are expected. The residents of Grindavik aren't allowed to go into town yet, and it is uncertain when they will, as a lot of town infrastructure is in bad shape. In the next couple of weeks, experts will map Grindavik using drones equipped with ground-penetrating radars to mark cavities that are close to the surface. Our rescue teams are now working hard to save the town from the harsh weather conditions present in Iceland at the moment, as for example pipes can't handle frost for long without hot water flowing through them. Electricity in Grindavik went out tonight after the main electricity line, which runs underground, took its last breath, but it has been buried under lava for a few days now. Electricity has been restored with temporary solutions in parts of the town, while our rescue teams are working hard to get the town connected again. When will another eruption start? Will it be closer to town? How long will this period last? Well, let's check out the details. Unfortunately, based on uplift data, another eruption is on the way. To get an idea of when it could start, we can take a look at this event so far. It started on October 25th, when uplift was detected in the Svartsengi system, which wasn't something new, as since 2020, we'd seen four intrusions from the system that didn't result in an eruption. This time, however, it would turn out to be different, as earthquake activity and uplift continued for two weeks, with data suggesting the magma to be at depths of around 4 to 5 kilometers. Then, on November 10th, the first intrusion happened, which resulted in a massive earthquake swarm and led to Grindavik being evacuated. As most of you know, that intrusion didn't result in an eruption, but there was still a lot of damage in Grindavik due to the earthquakes and uplift was still ongoing. Then, 38 days later, another intrusion occurred, which was seen in a sharp spike in earthquakes around 9pm on December 18th. Then, just one and a half hour later, a massive eruption began, but to everyone's relief, it was at a safe distance from Grindavik. It only lasted for two days, and like after the November 10th intrusion, uplift continued. At that point, we were beginning to realize what was going on, and just 27 days later, the third intrusion began, which resulted in another eruption, this time almost inside Grindavik. So, in just over two months, we've had three intrusions, which is an average of one intrusion per month. Based on that, we can assume another intrusion will occur sometime around the second week of February, but whether it will result in an eruption or not is uncertain. Even though it's not fancy, this is probably the best estimate we can get with our current understanding of geology as the idea of using the GPS stations to predict an eruption was pretty much thrown out of the window a few days before the January 14th eruption, as nothing happened when the so-called trigger height was reached. But what about the location? As with the estimated date of the next eruption, it is almost impossible to predict exactly where it will surface, and since there have only been two eruptions, we can't really determine any trend. We are at least confident that the eruption will occur east of Mount Thorbjörn, on the Sund-Nuka-Giga line, 
which I've marked on screen. This seems to be one of the two eruptive zones in the Schwarz Inki system, as in the last eruptive period on the Reykjanes Peninsula, eruptions occurred to the west of Mount Thorbjörn. So, during eruptive periods, eruptions seem to be confined to one zone. Of course, there's always the possibility that the next intrusion stalls, but based on the area's eruptive history, this eruptive period we're in could go on for tens of years, so the future is definitely scary. Lastly, here's how the lava field from the finished January 14th eruption looks like. It managed to cover just over 0.5 square kilometers, with a volume of erupted lava probably being around 2.8 million cubic meters. This makes it by far the smallest eruption, both in covered area and volume. Despite these last two eruptions having a lot more lava output in the first few hours than compared to eruptions in Fagradlarsfjall, they don't last nearly as long, and hence produce less volume of lava. The December 18th eruption, which had one of the highest recorded lava output in Iceland in centuries, didn't even come close to any of the three eruptions in Fagradlarsfjall in terms of volume. Whether this will continue to be the trend during these eruptions is of course uncertain, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. If you want to know more about the residents of Grindavík and their situation, check out Just Icelandic's recent video. He goes into a lot of detail regarding that. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed, hope to see most of you in the next video, and thanks for watching.